today we're at the end of our meeting we're in Aquarius Moon this is about the Radiant Zones network networking is Aquarius Moon and we've been discussing many cycles 500 year cycles 26,000 year cycle Pluto Uranus Neptune cycles and we have an amazing expert among us from Germany her name is Antonia Langsdorf she's very well known in Germany her television show is called Antonia's Sterne and she's going to say a few things about her book which she had written a while ago which was called 2012 in the center of the storm 2012 was that grand date that most of mankind has misunderstood what it was about but actually the window is still open until 2040 and Antonia is going to explain what's up and why the window is largely still open in Deutsch heißt ihr Buch 2012 im Zentrum des Sturms. Hello, my name is Antonia Langsdorf and thank you very much Michael St. Clair for having me at this amazing meeting where a group of great experts from all over the world gathered together to discuss future trends and they're coming from the field astrology, finances, intelligence and metaphysics which is a very unique mixture and I'm very very honored that I can be part of this group and I can present you what I found out about the cosmic cycles today. Um, yeah, in my book 2012 in the center of the storm I was discussing why in the years of actually 2008 to 2016 we are going through, uh, we're at the peak of the times of change we are going through and seven major cosmic cycles were all culminating or are all culminating in our time that we're in right now and one of these cycles is the 500 year renaissance cycle in 2006 a group around Raymond Merriman gathered in Tuscany and discussed um, the, the signs of the Renaissance back then, 500 years ago and now. And that also inspired me to write my book about the times we're in now. So, but let me sum up all the cycles that I found out about because, you know, it becomes really exciting when, you, um, when you're aware of the fact on what a peak time you are at this point. So one of the cycles we are in right now, but it's going to, to, uh, to end now, fortunately. I called it the crisis cycles and it's, um, it's depicted by a grand cross in the cardinal signs formed by the big outer planets. And Ray Merriman has a, gave, given it a name called the cardinal climax. And um, each time the planets are in this alignment, in this grand cross in the skies, they indicate a major crisis in economics as well as uh, governments, uh, movements of war and even um, natural catastrophes. And the cycle that hit now between 2010 and 2015 um, is the one that in, or 2000, I'm sorry, 2008 to 2015, seven years is the one, of course, that went along with the big banking crash and the financial crisis. And the last one before that happened in uh, 1929 when we had the Black Friday on the stock markets. So that we had very similar constellations then. So that is one of the, the cycles that we're in now, but this one ends in 2015. That's the good news. <laughs> so. The next cycle that is really exciting is the Neptune cycle. That's, that's a very simple cycle. It's just Neptune one time evolving uh, through the solar system. And it does that every 165 years and now came back to its ruling sign of Pisces. And Neptune is very strong in its ruling sign, obviously. And I found out that the last time when Neptune was in Pisces, we had that was the time of the gold rush. I mean, the real physical gold rush when people you know traveled around the world and really dig the gold out of the ground and now we're having a new kind of gold rush because the whole world is uh, about gold and how gold can save us um, against money that's really not real 
And, uh, and I also think there's another rush coming up that might be depicted by uh, Neptune in Pisces, and that is um, that um, there have been many countries in the U.S. where medical marijuana is now legalized, and uh, there are signs that it's going to be a big, big, big business. The more legalizing of this healthy herb <laughs> is going on, the more, of course, people will make business with it. And I think that has clearly the sign of uh, Neptune in Pisces. And more than that, uh, Neptune in Pisces also indicates um, a spiritual awakening. And it's also a sign, of, it could be a sign of hope that we are making a progress because what we really have to do is we have to get out of these of the religious wars that are going on still in the world. And um, when I wrote this book, I said there might be a spiritual figure that would symbolize that Neptune in Pisces. And I really think that the new pope that we are having right now could be that figure because he's very different from the other ones. He really, he really uh, goes in that direction of Neptune, like selfless love and, you know, not, not, it's not about power and money like the Catholic Church always was, but this Pope is telling us that it's, it's really about, you know, love around the world and helping people. So I think he's a very important figure for Neptune and Pisces. Um, also, there are other interesting um, new um, findings in science. For instance, we find that it's the, the evolution is not only about survival of the fittest and the strongest, evolution is also about cooperation. Yeah, science has found that the principle that's even more powerful than fight is cooperation. So these things are going on, and in combination with Uranus, who is now in uh, um, in Aries, uh, indicating new inventions and breakthroughs in science. I think this combination of Neptune and Pisces and Uranus and Aries is really uh, bringing forth great new uh, discoveries in science and in metaphysics as well. And I think meetings like this meeting where people who are clearly, um, you know, scientifically um, educated and people who are into finances and people who are metaphysics, that the fact that these people get together and discuss future trends, that's a very unique new uh, idea. And, and that also contains the sign of the times that we're in with these cycles. Um, Okay, now get me to the, let me get to the Renaissance cycle. We had been discussing a 500-year cycle before, and with, without linking it really to the constellations of the stars, but indeed there is a cycle that, um, is form, that formed now that is exactly the same aspect that formed during this, the uh, unique time of the Renaissance in the 1400, 1500, and that is a so-called sextile between Pluto and Neptune. And this sextile lasts for about a hundred years. And the last time we had that was from 1440 to 1540. And now we're in it again. And it started in 1940. And it's going to last until 2040. And there are more things to it. You know, this, it started um, and during this time window also interesting planetary alignments happened. But let me, let me just talk about this special um, aspect that lasts for 100 years. Because during that time in the um, Renaissance back then, some things happened that really led whole mankind into a, uh, a quantum jump of consciousness. And one of this was 1440 when uh, Johann von Gutenberg um, invented the book print. Um, that was so crucial for mankind because up till then all the knowledge that was in books could only be copied by hand. Yeah? If you wanted to uh, publish a book, somebody had to do with handwriting and there were only a few copies. And, um, and with the book printing, all the knowledge that has been, had been there, all of a sudden it could make available for many, many more people. It, it took a while, of course, until that really, you know, spread out and got happened. But that was the initial, that was the initial um, spark, you know, that made knowledge available for everybody. And so that was a very, very important step for mankind. Also during this time, Copernicus proved 
that uh, the Earth was not the middle, uh, the uh, the center of the universe, let's so to say, the solar system, but the Sun was the center of the solar system. That also, of course, caused a big shift in consciousness. It was also the time that Columbus discovered America, and um, so. Nowadays we say that the Renaissance back then uh, marks the time from the dark Middle Ages into the new time, the, the new age of enlightenment. So, and, and there were the giants, the giants of the Renaissance are influential until today. Those were artists like Michelangelo, Paracelsus, uh, Paracelsus the great medicine uh, doctor, um, Botticelli, Martin Luther, um, Albrecht Dürer, Leonardo da Vinci, and last but not least, Lorenzo di Medici. And the family of the Medici really installed the banking system as we have it now. It kind of, it, it had its first blossoming and its, its first powerful um, um, come out during that Renaissance time. And really, back then, they had, they had a network of banking of, of different banks all over Europe they were very well organized you know you could write a check you could uh, borrow money for interest rate everything was like it is today <laughs> and it's still there and now we're in a new time of a new renaissance so maybe there's gonna be another big change another big jump also in the financial system we'll see Okay, if we compare the Renaissance back then to the Renaissance now, the most important thing I think is that during this time window from 1940 to 2040, the first computer was um, introduced to the public and that was 1949, you know? And I would clearly relate this to the invent, uh, invention of the book print in uh, 1440. I think that's the same thing 500 years later that really was the most uh, gigantic, gigantic uh, event with the most incredible um, consequences for mankind. And of course also science is moving along. Uh, we are now, we discovered for instance through chaos mathematics we discovered that uh, the saying of metaphysics who are saying as above so below it's, it's scientifically true because chaos mathematics proved that on bigger scales to smaller scales patterns of nature repeat themselves when you calculate them with mathematical methods. So science is also making big, big uh, progress and metaphysics and science are, it's like they're, they're beginning to come back together. They kind of parted during the first renaissance. The alchemy was big, astrology was big during the renaissance and then they parted during the time of enlightenment they parted and into science and what people thought was just uh, superstition. But now, uh, due to the internet, astrology is big again because never has been the knowledge of astrology so available like today. So the computer made it possible for astrology to have a new big time. And by the way, the computer, the internet and astrology are ruled by the same planet, Uranus. <laughs> Okay, let me quickly um, announce two more cycles that are exciting and big and important. Um, due to the precession of the Earth, the precession of, precession of the Earth means that the, earth, the axis of the Earth is not, is not fixed. It moves slowly. So if the projected north point of the Earth, if, the, if you project it to the sky, it will, it will describe a circle along the fixed stars um, and the time for the circle is uh, 25,800 years. So that's the precession cycle. And, during that, and that means that the fixed stars um, are uh, shifted against our po uh, Earth point of uh, spring equinox. So every 2,150 years, the fixed stars change the signs. Yeah? And we have a very important fixed star sign change around 2012 happening, and that's Regulus, the star of the king, who was in Leo for more than 2,000 years, moved now into Virgo and the zodiac. And that has a very, very strong meaning because the meaning is that we have been 
Leo, we have been partying, we have been reigning the earth, you know, the earth was there to serve us. And now with Virgo, I think the meaning is that now we are there to serve the earth in the sense of, you know, that we all want to survive, so we have to be environmentally conscious. And I think that's a very important, that's a very important sign of the sky is to remind us to that. And this summer, 2015, Jupiter will enter the sign of Virgo and will be conjunct Regulus on zero degrees of Virgo and will, you know, enhance this important subject for us all. And then um, the Maya cycle. You know, everything, people were really excited in 2012 uh, about saying the Mayan calendar comes to an end. Does that mean that the world comes to an end? I really don't know how this hype could, <laughs> could have been so strong. But, you know, I talked to a Mayan professor who travels to, uh, to the original places where the Mayans had their buildings and talked to him. And all the people who are really scientifically in, into it and know the field say, there's no sign that the Mayan calendar ended. It's just that it completed a cycle and a new cycle is going to begin. And if you count five of these big Maya cycles, you have the time that is approximately just as much as the um, precession cycle. Five Maya times are 25,625 years and the precession cycle is 25,800 years. So maybe the Mayans who were obsessed stargazers already knew about the precession of the earth. And then there was a saying also in 2012, everybody said there's going to be a cosmic alignment. There's been alignment and that's going to shift the, um, that's, going to sh that's, that's going to be a big shift and that could cause natural disasters on earth. And so I went and wanted to find out what kind of alignment would that be because in 2012, the, uh, the magic day, 21st of September of 2012, there was not such a planetary alignment in the solar system. So I thought, hmm, what did they mean? And I found, um, together with a fellow astrologer who had been doing a lot of research on that, that the galactic nodes, you know, according, just as the, the moon nodes in the solar system, we have galactic nodes too. And she said that these galactic nodes are shifting sign too. They're shifting from Sagittarius, Gemini, to zero degrees of Capricorn and Cancer. And also completing the pre this big cycle that is um, almost 26,000 years long. And there's also a shift now. And this indicates, that's my theory, it indicates that um, the field of genetics, our you know, the science that is trying to find out everything about the human genome and trying to manipulate it for reasons of health or, you know, that we might go in a direction where we are trying to optimize our children, that would be, I think, um, depicted by the, the, the axis of Capricorn cancer that the galactic nodes are entering now. So this is going to be, I think that's going to be a big, big, big thing in the future. We, we don't talk much about it now because we have so many other problems to solve. But I do think that this is a future trend to, you know, to be aware of for the future as in, in the sense of investment as well as in the sense of the, uh, the moralistic uh, implications it comes with. So this would be the seventh of these big cycles that we're in and they're all coming due in this time window that uh, that aligns with the time window of the Renaissance. So that's what I found out and um, it's all in detail described in my book 2012 in the center of the storm which also contains predi predictions for each sign until 2020. It's available in German under the name of 2012 im Zentrum des Sturms. Okay, I hope um, I could give you some clues and um, Thank you again for having me on this interesting meeting and uh, I hope this great group is going to get together again one time. Thank you.